And uh, we were starting with the ball in the second half, and I believed in our players, and I believed in what we had planned uh, to get the ball in, and I believed in how we were playing. And so I just voiced my opinion uh, to coach, and and uh, we just kind of talked through it. The timeout obviously gave us the opportunity to kind of rethink it, and it turned out to be a, a good decision uh, because our guys went and executed and did, did, did what they were supposed to do. Well, I think it should have a lot. Of, it should it should have a lot of ramifications in a in a strong way for our team. And and you know we got put in the situation the week before, and came up short. And really, um, you know, honestly, to, to a large degree, felt really good about the call and felt good about what we were about to do. And and we just didn't quite get it done. And to go and to plan and practice with your coaches and to say, hey, here's what we're going to do and. Here's what we're gonna. Here's how we believe we're gonna punch the ball in in a critical moment in the goal line. Uh, we felt like getting in the, you know, being in the sidecar, had the Luke's, uh, you know, opportunity to move and run, keep the balls uh, is to our advantage, and um, you know, and we we executed the the call perfectly and uh, and rolled rolled them off the ball and punched it in, and it was huge huge for the outcome of the game. What was the difference overall in the game with your run game execution, and what does that do for you? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it makes it makes life better. Uh, it makes it flow better, you know, when you when you're falling forward, you know, and you're running the ball uh, with some effectiveness, uh, which we were uh, didn't had very few. I can't remember any off the top of my head, but had very few uh, lost yardage runs. Most most of the things were, you know, were moving forward, which was a testament to our, I think our line covering them up, you know, pretty well. And then our backs falling forward. Um, and so, you know, when you can run the ball and get rely on getting three and four yards on early downs when you want to hand the ball off, it makes things a lot lot easier. Uh, and uh, I thought, obviously, uh, from a confidence standpoint, I mean, that was probably the best that we've run the ball, you know, from a consistent basis and um, and something to certainly to build off of. You mentioned maybe you're going to get the ball back to start second half. What can a successful kind of double dip there do for a team? Well, I mean, you know, obviously any Big Ten game and uh, – you know those possessions are so, and just in football in general, foot, you know those possessions are so so vital. And to be able to score touchdowns on back-to-back -back possessions, um, you know, obviously was a huge. I mean, I would I don't know what the percentages are. Coach makes a big deal of it, and and we do in our organization. But I would say, when you double dip with two touchdowns in football, your percentages of scoring winning the game are probably through the roof. To be my guess, and uh, I know they are. I just don't know what those numbers are, but it's a really strong indicator you're going to win the game if you can score right before halftime and then turn around and have 14 points put on the board for the other team touches the ball. It's a big deal. Were some of the unique challenges against the Wisconsin defense this week? Uh, well, uh, you know, I mean, they're really they got really good players and they have a really good scheme. Uh, they're like any like most of our Big Ten uh, foes, you know, are they they. They believe in what they do defensively, uh, even though it's a new new coaching staff and a new um, scheme. There's a lot of carryover from what they've done previous years in the personnel. Uh, you know, they brought some new faces in as well, but they get a, they're a big, stout, strong defense that's uh, that's playing very well. So it's there's a lot of challenges. Brad, it's talked about, like, last year you guys lost a lot of voices in the locker room, but it would seem like Casey Washington's the guy who's finding his voice or has found it. I guess what have you observed? Just his ability in that regard. Casey has uh, has really grown in that role for us, and uh, and just been it's been really impressive to watch. And our team really respects him. And then and then it even obviously it just cements it when he shows up the way he shows up. And uh, and we've got tons of faith in Casey. I think him and Luke have a great connection and rapport. I think Luke's got that with all three of those guys. You know that he feels comfortable with and. But, you know, what he did in the game, uh, what he did leading up to the game and just the way he approached the week, the way he led our our players, uh, and and then for him to do make those two critical plays, the end of half, and without the end of half and end of, end of game plays that he made, you know, winning a one-on-one -on -one ball, um, the outcome could have been completely different. And for him to – it's really fun. It's really rewarding. I know for him. I know he wants to get in the end zone, and that's going to come. Um, and but just for him to lead and to have the intensity he had during the week, and for him to be that guy on Saturday, man, I think it just really solidified the way our team looks at him and as a leader and somebody they really respect. How is Luke developing and just processing his decision making, going through progressions? How is he developing in that regard through the season? 
Well, uh, I think I think uh, slowly and surely, uh, steadily. You know, I mean, there's shoot. I mean, I tell you, I obviously one thing that sticks out to me about him is the situation doesn't ever seem to be too big for him. You know. Uh, you know, he's been in two or three of these moments now, well, two specifically that he's helped us win at the end of the game, you know, in a two-minute drive. And uh, I think so that speaks to his poise, his inner poise, and um, his, inner, his inner belief in what he's doing and, and how he goes about doing it. And, uh, you know, inevitably, if you're making 35 or 40 decisions a game like you are playing quarterback for our system, you're going to make some decisions that you want back. Just like me as a play caller, I'm going to call it 80 plays or 70 plays. There's going to be inevitably a few that I want back. We're both trying to minimize what those are in, at the end of the day when you watch the film. And so, um, you know, like as we go into week, week eight now, right, for us to and for him to play at the level that he's capable of playing at, like those three or four plays a game that – you know, we may not see see a read or maybe skip through a read. We got to make those plays more consistently. But I love the way he's competing, and the, what he's using with his legs, and the way he's remaining poised under under really tough circumstances. I mean, just like the last drive. I mean, the flip pass that he threw to to uh, who caught that one? Aiden. The the flip that when he flipped it out to Aiden. You know, just a, that's a big deal. I mean, it's, you know, it's a minute, 30, 45 seconds left in the game. And, I mean, just threw a strike, made a great read, threw it out there. That Our guys did a great job on the perimeter. We we go on, we're in running mode, and he looks at me in between the series, and he was like, hey, give me, like, let me read, let me read this, you know. So I let him read it. And he, sure enough, he pulled it, got 12 critical yards or 11, and could have been the difference in the game. You know, those kinds of things, it's been really see, fun to see him grow. Because he knows what he wants, and and as we're this is a really long answer to a short question. I'm sorry, and I have a tendency to do that sometimes. But like he's he's on the verge of becoming you know really good, and those are the things that we've got to get tidied up. Is just like uh, you know those few plays a game where it's like we gotta we gotta make sure we're 100 percent on those reads and those movement keys. Seems like the, the uh, in the run game just kind of simplified things a little bit up front. Now with with the pass pro, is that something? Pass pro schemes, is that something that you would look at and, and make an adjustment? I don't think so. I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty straightforward and simple within the schemes. I mean, we've got um, – now, do we have to mitigate some of those? You know, the big thing that keeps showing up is when we get in third and sixth to more, uh, you know, that, that even in, in the course of the game the other day, we had three different protection schemes in those situations. You know, it wasn't just relying on one, one scheme. You know, we got f maximum protection. We got double chips. We've got – you know, um, move move the pocket protection, you know, like, so I, I think our menu is what our menu is. We just got to continue to get better at it and continue to stay, not continue, got to make sure that we're staying away from those obvious passing situations because we've just not been great in those, um, obviously. And so, um, but yeah, as far as the manipulation of that, we did simplify the run scheme, but was within the confines of what we already do and how we do it, just like the protection. We've already kind of, we've already kind of manipulated some of those during the course of the year and tweaked them a little bit more. Uh, always looking to see what we can do to put our guys in the best position. But, like, I think the protection schemes are kind of what the protection schemes are right now. We've got to get better within those. On the fourth, oh, sorry, go ahead. On the fourth down, at the, the first down, how often during the week are you guys talking about that kind of situation? And, and how is that whole conversation going? Sure. Through? Well, Coach does a great job of making us really think forward on, you know, those types of situations. I mean, situational football is something that we hang our hat on here, talk about it a lot, and as coaches – uh, you know, we we put a lot of time into uh, having some forward thinking about what those situations are. Then on Friday night, the coordinators meet with coach and, you know, we go through those scenarios. What what could happen? What's going to be your fourth and one call? You know, what what are you going to do here if it's the end of game and it's third and 15? You know, like coach really makes you think about things that are unique to the game that only matter when they matter. And so when we got down in that situation, we had already vetted you know, what we wanted to call, what we believed in. We had a run call. We had a check run. We had two different runs in the in the, in the the call, and they gave us a look to check the other run, and we checked it at the line. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but it was a check, and we just stayed with what we believed in and executed it. And that's that's what that's what football teams do that win games, and we did that. Yeah, on Saturday, 30 times, you guys, the person who touched the football, battery who touched the football, center, quarterback, and whatever skill guy, was not, none of them were over 20 years old. And I'm just curious, when you watch the film, you notice that? Like, is there 
something about the youth movement that you coach differently a little bit and just have to keep in the back of your mind when you have this much youth out there? You know, um, this point in the season, I mean, I think we kind of talked about that last week a little bit. I think I, I don't really necessarily see it through that lens, you know, because I felt like our guys were prepared to um, to go play the, the game plan um, no matter what, you know, what experience level they were. And I think that showed. I think Thad had, had those young backs really prepared, and that showed during the game. I mean, I, I, the, com the protection, Aiden Loffrey on the first touchdown pass, tracking the backer and protecting a Caden running a check down on all go and the two-minute drive and making 10 yards, a subtle – play that not many people pay attention to, but that was an awesome release by him and check down. I was like, this is a veteran. They played like veterans to a large degree, and I felt that in practice and their preparation. Now, when you step back and look at it from your question, your perspective, it's pretty impressive to, for them to do what they did, you know, uh, but you're talking about the battery with Kruitz and with, with Luke and, you know, with those young guys, and that's, you know, whether you're young or old, it's this time of year, you're not new anymore. You know, you're going into week eight, you're not a you're not a newcomer anymore, and uh, I thought all of those guys handled themselves like veterans. And Saturday, it's, it's one of the reasons we won the game. What stood out about Kane and Aiden and how they handled that moment in that game? What about them? What, what stood out about them? I mean, just they fell forward. You know, I mean, they they, I mean, obviously Caden did, and but even Aiden was running and falling forward. I mean that. That catch he made it in the game was was huge, and the way he fell forward and fought for those extra yards with ball security, uh, the way he protected the passer. I mean, they they played, um, you know, they played like got seasoned players that that was not their first time to when they went in the game knowing I'm the main attraction. You know, I'm not the understudy anymore. I, I'm the I'm the main attraction, and I'm going to be carrying the load of the game, both you know metaphorically and physically. You know, and um, and man, they just did a great job. And our team rallied around them. I, I really believe that. You mentioned falling forward like three times. Yeah. There's something emotional about, well, that got stuffed, and then you look up the scoreboard and it's second and eight instead of second and 10 or second and 11. Well, I mean, yeah, I think our team felt that, you know. I mean, I think our team, I think our, I think, I think Maryland felt that a little bit to some degree, you know, and, and I don't mean that in any, any, any way that it sounds like. I mean, I think they felt the back that, was hard to get down and was leaning on them and was, to your point, at contact. Now, and to your point, instead of being second and 10, it was second and seven. And, and all of our backs have run hard this year. I mean, Reggie, when he was in there, and uh, Josh, those guys have all fallen forward. And obviously, Caden being the stature that he is, you would expect him to run forward and fall forward. But he did it, you know. I mean, he did it, and he, and he's got to continue to do that and continue to trust his reads. And I thought it was impressive that Aiden. So I think that's a reflection of the way Thad's coaching them and and their grit and toughness as backs as a unit. Um, and so uh, we always want them. You know, that's always a good thing when you're pushing the line. You can't fall forward if you're not pushing the line a little bit. And our our guys up front uh, did a nice job of that on Saturday. How does the early down success impact your play calling? And it seems like you were able to take a few more deep shots. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, we want to be balanced, uh, and um, I think we fell into a really good balance the other day during the course of the game because I had confidence in, uh, in the way the game was unfolding and both what I was going to run, you know, quick pass or take a shot or uh, early down run. I felt like our guys were in, really understood the plan and had executed during practice, and that showed up during the game that we weren't perfect. I mean, we, we had some – you know, they those guys are on scholarship too and got good coaches, and they made good plays and adjustments, but – I could tell our guys were very in tune with what we were doing and very comfortable. So, uh, uh, and, and I think that helped me get in my flow better. And um, I think that, that that all made for a better performance. Yeah, this football, I mean, you're going to make mistakes or, you know, things that you're going to think, man, I wish I would have had this catch or this throw a little bit better. Or, and you know, one thing about, uh, I think, Listen, I can't tell you how impressed I was with uh, just our team. You know, obviously, as a offense, defense, and special teams, the way we fought um, when you know when our backs were against the wall, and, and they continue to be against the wall. You know, that's the thing, that's the mentality. But like, just offensively, you know, to speak on that, like our guys, our guys didn't flinch or didn't waver, uh, even though things had not gone the way that you know, a well documented way, well, uh, we're all well aware it hadn't gone great at times, and. For them to not flinch and to go in, um, I think it's just Pat's kind of a microcosm of that. You know, like he just keeps fighting. He keeps coming every day to work, and he's tough and gritty. 
he believes in his team. He believes in his teammates. He believes in his quarterback. They believe in each other. You know, we got a lot of belief in the in the building, and uh, that showed up on Saturday. It's it's that was really validating. I think for them, for him, for us, that was a good moment for um, and kind of a microcosm of of uh, you know our organization offensively. How often do you rep? I don't say a broken play like that, where the quarterback keeping his eyes forward or the receiver kind of playing back to the quarterback. I know that you try to blow it dead once the play kind of gets wonky in practice. But how often do you kind of rehearse that? Well, we do stress we do stress playing through the whistle and having game day reactions in practice. Um, now the route the route structure on that particular route was Isaiah coming back underneath naturally, like he was run, running a return route, and so. Luke stepping up in the pocket. The cup was really nice. The protection was good. Luke kept his eyes downfield, popped him in the little slot, the little spot that where his read tell, tells him to take it. And Isaiah split him, which was great to get him in the end zone. That was long overdue for him and the impact he has to, on us offensively to get in there. And we got to have more of that, you know, with him and the other guys on the perimeter as well. But yeah, that's a, I think that's a reflection of, you know, like we try to, especially with Luke. I mean, you know, Luke's, Luke's going to lead the pocket some. I mean, he's going to use his legs and, you don't want to say no on that, uh, and sometimes he shouldn't leave, but then other times he leaves and he gets a 26-yard gain, you know. And so that, so our, our receivers have learned to, I think, play and anticipate when he's in the, when he's in practice or in game, you know, like you got to be ready to react to some scramble rules. Uh, rules, and uh, we've made a fair amount of plays doing that this year, and that was a critical one, obviously, on third down there.